Hi, my name is Willan Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am so excited to be speaking with a Broadway superstar and concert artist, Ron Bomer. For more on Ron, you can read more about him right below this video, but in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at Ron's amazing talent. When I turned the corner, I saw you, I can't explain. I gotta have you, baby, sweet Jesus, tell me what's your name. Well, hello, Ron. How are you? I'm well, Will. How are you? Thanks for taking time with me today. Well, thank you, my friend. And I've been a fan of yours for years, so I'm so grateful to finally meet you. Although I'm sure we've met in person in passing throughout the years. I'm sure we have, but it's really nice to be sitting down with you right now in our virtual world. I know. I love it. I'm here in New York City and you're in San Diego. That's right. San Diego. We've lived out here. Sandra Joseph, my wife and I have lived out here for about five years now. We're still in New York a lot, but uh, mostly we're here. Well, this past year, we haven't been there a lot, of course, because of the pandemic. But uh, we're, this has been, this was the ideal place to spend a pandemic. We really, really had a beautiful time here. And we'd been traveling so much. We, you know, I'd been on tour with the Book of Mormon for almost seven years, a long time with that. And my wife is a keynote speaker. She's, you know, the longest running leading lady and uh, the longest running musical Phantom of the Opera. So she does a keynote about that as well all over the country. And we've been tra traveling in these opposite circles, getting together as often as we can. But in many ways, as many dark things came out of this pandemic, one of the great gifts was we actually got to be in our own home for the first time in forever. So we've had a wonderful year here. That's amazing. Well, the audience has got a little sneak peek of your amazing talent, song Frozen Flame off of your latest album, Legacy. And Ron, you know, you've done everything. You've done everything from Broadway to touring the country, the world in concerts with symphonies. And I want to know first and foremost, where you grew up and when did you know that you had a knack for singing and just being a part of the arts? Huh. Well, thank you for that question. I, I grew up in a, a little tiny town in Cincinnati. It's technically in the the uh, county of Cincinnati, uh, Hamilton County, but it's a town called Cheviot, Ohio, and it's a very small town. Um, I lived there uh, my entire life until I was 18 years old. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of live theater, though I do remember my grandmother taking me to see a play of Aesop's fables and there was a fox character in it that I was really drawn to because he wore this cow that looked like Batman and I was like I want to be that I want to be Batman <laughs> <laughs> and then I kind of, then I got to go backstage and meet the actor and I got really smitten with that world just with the world of theater and then other than that you know we had the variety shows we had Sonny and Cher and we had uh, um uh, the Hudson brothers and the Smothers brothers and, you know, people who would, Dean Martin, who would come out and do a show, they'd sing an opening number and then they'd talk to the audience, tell some jokes, guests would come on, they'd do scenes. And that to me was so appealing. I was like, I love that. I want to do that. I want to do everything. But singing didn't take off for me for a long time, even though I moved to New York and thought I'd make it as a Broadway performer, hope to make it as a Broadway performer. I always considered my voice very sort of middling, you know, not anything particularly special. And when I moved to New York, shows like 42nd Street, it was all tap shows. It was, you know, everything was that. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll be a dancer. That's going to be the thing that I did. I did study dance. And then the British invasion happened and all these giant, you know, Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals, Les Mis came in. And I was like, well, yeah, I, gotta, I better really learn how to do this and really focus on it. And I was surprised as as anyone that I was able to find notes that I didn't know I had and kind of land in that in that world. I'm grateful that I did, that I got to go on to play roles like The Phantom and, and Joe Gillis and Sunset Boulevard, Andras and Les Miserables. But 
I really wasn't expecting it. I thought I was going to be more of a song and dance man, and I ended up kind of being the Andrew Lloyd Webber guy. Well, I love it. And you've been a part of so many hit musicals, whether it be Les Mis, Fiddler on the Roof, um, you know, touring, as you said, just recently with Book of Mormon. But actually, you were also in, in you don't know this, I wanted to reveal it to you. You were in the hit revival of my favorite musical of all time, Ragtime. Yeah. And you were absolutely beautiful in that. And one of my closest friends in the business of show is Mimi Paris. Oh, Mimi. I adore and Mimi. And I actually got to see her go on as mother for those final few shows. And yeah, um, she actually did the final performance because we closed prematurely, unfortunately. But Christian had a, had another engagement. And so Mimi went on and she was spectacular. And in many ways, it really kind of helped launch Mimi's career too. She's done just beautifully. Oh, nine to five, wicked, you name it, she's done it. And, but Ron, you've, you've done it all as well. And with a career that is so expansive as yours, you know, again, traversing not only the stage, but your concert work. Is there a place around the country and around the world that you've loved being in most? Huh, that's a great question. I've done a lot of stuff in Canada and Canadian audiences, Toronto audiences are really, really wonderful. There's just this fantastic cosmopolitan vibe about them. But I have to say, and it's a strange thing to say, the most outgoing, it's not that strange to say, actually, the most outgoing and energetic audiences that we have are in Florida. I've done several things with the Florida Symphony, with Florida Orchestra. And we do we do like five or six different cities there when we play there. And every time the energy is off the charts, you know, and they by and large, they also happen to be our oldest audience, you know, but maybe it's just because everybody's on vacation and the sun is shining and and they just really, really love live entertainment. And I'm, I'm so excited that we're reaching the end of this pandemic, that you know, we're getting back to where live stuff is starting to happen again. I actually just had a booking that was canceled because of the pandemic. Uh, start up again for New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve of this year, and so I'm really excited about that one. To just just be in front of a live audience again is going to be great. That's amazing. And you know, in my performing career, I was very fortunate from crazy to think 25 years from now I was 10 to 35 performing with my twin brother all across the country um, in the world as well but you know it is a very special thing when you get to perform with a loved one in my case it was my twin brother but in your yeah. case it's your wife who has like you mentioned such an oh my god her resume forget it what's it like performing when you get it when you get the opportunity to perform with your wife it's you know it's pretty incredible I mean, it's, um, you know, particularly we, as I said, you know, prior to the pandemic, a lot of our circles were separate. So we would, we would actually meet up when she does her keynotes, whenever possible, I will come and guest star in at the end and we will close her keynote with the title song from the Phantom of the Opera. And to have, you know, of course, the, I, I count myself as one of the luckiest men on the planet. I mean, my, my wife is spectacular. We have an amazing relationship. Um, but then to add this layer, as you said, of being able, like, you, like you've done with your brother, of being able to create art in front of people and to share that kind of connection through these characters, through the music, um, it's a really unique and really special thing to have in our, our relationship. And of course, people love the story. I mean, the backdrop that we met and fell in love while starring opposite each other in Phantom of the Opera, and that we've continued that into our, you know, into our performing life. Um, that, you know, sort of wherever we go, they're not very far behind us is this backdrop of Phantom of the Opera and what those characters were. And it's, it, it, you know, it's a little, hokey to some people, you know, in a sense of show business. I love but, it. I think it comes out of, frankly, all of those probably old school MGM musicals that you grew up watching. And, you know, this storied r romance and relationship up against one of the most romantic, if not one of the most romantic musicals ever created. I think yeah. it was in the air for you, my friend. And I love, I love your story. And I love that both of you are so unapologetic, both individually and collectively with it, because I'm thinking now more than ever, after the most horrific thing any of us have ever been through in a hundred years for our world, that people are going to be leaning into now more than ever, the power of love and the power of family. So I just think about the stories again, that you and your wife tell individually, but as a collective, it's going to be needed now more than ever, my friend. That's a beautiful way to put that, Will. Thank you for that. And it's, you know, it really is at its core, 
you know, people get caught up in the success of Phantom because it's it's a juggernaut. It's massive. It's it's literally the most lucrative entertainment in, enter, entertainment piece of all time. It's just the revenue is staggering. Um, and but at its core, what keeps bringing people back to it is this story of the fragility and the vulnerability of of love and in particular of this character who is afraid to reveal who he truly is because he can't he feels he cannot be loved in that way and and at its essence there is a deep and meaningful story there and you know we tap into it but the the other side of it is it's it's very sexy it's a very sexual musical i mean you walk in and you see you know naked bodies on the the proscenium you know it's it's a fascinating look into the the history of romance and and sexuality and all of those things brought together in music which clearly has you know will will stand the test of time forever there is something about that music and i'm a huge andrew lloyd Webber fan i've done a lot of his shows from woman in white to to uh to sunset to to uh this one even aspects of love you know and i know a lot of his music but there is something about that score there's something about phantom that functions in the human heart and mind and body it vibrates at an entirely different level so it's remarkable to have that be a part of your your story that uh, there we are we we brought that to life and and met and fell in love in it and it, it continues to resonate through our lives I love it, Ron. Well, listen, I could speak with you forever, but I do want to button with the fact that, you know, I'm so excited that you're coming on board, Phoenix, you know, this brand new platform, groundbreaking, and it's weird to say that it's groundbreaking and putting artists first. But, you know, again, what I'm most excited about is for me as an artist, as a director, I've already been able to meet some amazing collaborators in the East that I'm already frankly, working on original musicals with, just yeah. from meeting them through my interactions with Phoenix and their CEOs. And I think of someone like you, Ron, who I think not only, well, I think, I know, whose career not only is so impressive, and I know that people in the East are gonna want you over there, I'm sure you've already been there to perform, but also your music and your individual career as an artist you know the music you sing is transcendent and i feel like great storytelling and great songs are transcendent in of a in our universal language yeah absolutely and it's fascinating to have this platform by the way i'm i'm so thrilled that you are the human face in these interviews of of phoenix because you know you're such a, a warm and just delightful person and you you bring the depth to this that humanizes you know what what this new platform is going to be, which I think is so wonderful. Thanks, Ron. And, and to be able to, to connect throughout the world with this platform is, is spectacular. You know, the, the music that I've created and lucky enough that, that I've been lucky enough to be associated with has a uni universality that is, it, it's amazing to have this very personal, just an, an app that is your own app that can literally reach people all over the planet and you know now more than ever i mean if the last year has really unified the planet in such a way that you know just through the technology that's made us reach out we performed concerts over zoom now that have reached out to people all over the world and this is just a further extension of making our world smaller and more accessible and i'm very very excited to be a part of it that's awesome, Ron. Well, I'm so grateful for your time today. And uh, I can't wait to meet you in person next time in your, you're in New York, my friend. I'm in Midtown. I'll take you out for coffee. I'll see you this summer. We'll be there. Awesome. Can't wait. Thank you so much, Ron. Pleasure, Will. Thank you. Bye. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.